you know, I like to write, you know, I just stylistically I get some satisfaction out of it. I like, you know, sharing my work with readers. I like being able to explore a topic that's underexplored, um, things that aren't necessarily getting in the news. I feel some satisfaction out of that. Some of the essays are directly about the Midwest, directly about St. Louis in particular, but generally it's about the decline of U.S. institutions and trust, um, you know, throughout the country and also to some extent internationally. I think that because I live in St. Louis, which we tend to notice things kind of falling apart before other parts of the country do, what I've noticed in working for the media, being part of the media, is to have a view from this place, for people from here to speak out. Um, you know, I think you really saw that in Ferguson, where the national media tried to portray it as this kind of riot that they didn't understand instead of really talking to folks who've lived here, who'd been experiencing racism and brutal conditions. They want to parachute in and parachute out and I try to fill in that gap um, and bring what I can, you know, myself and I like seeing authors in other regions uh, that tend to be overlooked doing that as well in the South and in the Midwest. Thank you very much Pennsylvania, thank you. As I said, I used to work at the New York Daily News. I understood New York tabloid media, how they portrayed Trump. I understood how Trump worked the media. I'll never forget, there was one time um, where he said, you know, unemployment is 40%. And everyone laughed at that because it sounded so ridiculous to them because technically unemployment was something like 5%. But I kept thinking, that is how it feels. It feels like it's 40% because people are underemployed, because people can't pay their bills, because people are going to lose their homes or have lost their homes or can't find a job that fits their skill set. It feels like 40 and so it doesn't matter if it's true, it matters if it feels true. When you live in a state that doesn't value the truth, that's often trying to suppress the truth, then telling the truth uh, can be seen as a radical act. And I don't think of myself as a radical person, but that's, you know, that's how I'm characterized sometimes and I think it's more a reflection of the political climate we live in. I tend to feel like a, a real sense of urgency about what's going on now. I think that I have uh, unique areas of expertise because I studied the former Soviet Union, because I I've now been looking at the Trump administration very intimately for a long time. I want to you know, keep people informed about political crises and try to connect the dots, bring things together in a coherent analysis. I move fast, I think fast, I react fast, and I feel uh, very anxious about what's going on. So you know, maybe this is my catharsis, you know, maybe this is my way of dealing with it, is by trying to make some kind of impact um, you know, through my writing, at least by keeping people informed. And I'm fine if people disagree with me, you know, if they come into the debate with facts and with their own prerogative and their own opinion. You know, it freaks me out when everybody's in agreement. That's what you know, a fascist state is. If everyone is agreeing with me, I'd be greatly concerned.